Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are. Thank you for joining us. My name's Holly. I am with Go To College Fairs, and I'm joined by Greg, who is head of product here, and Avery, who will be helping me with Q&A. We'll be covering some of the new services we have on the ground this fall, including our new product, College Matchmaking, and a demo of our scanning app including notes on the latest version, which you are going to love. So expect to be with us for about 45 minutes to an hour, including time for Q&A. Speaking of questions, please use your Q&A tool, which is found at the bottom of the Zoom window. You can and should look for questions like your own and upvote them. We do have the upvote feature uh, enabled for our webinar today. So this will allow us to answer the most commonly asked questions first, leaving others for later if we have time. Feel free to ask questions throughout the webinar, keep an eye on the questions of your colleagues and upvote them. And we'll look at them together later after the scanning app demo presentation. Please don't use the chat for questions. We won't be looking there and you can't upvote there. Presenters will use the chat to drop in helpful links and we will use the chat for a fun interaction along the way today, but we will not use chat for questions. So please be sure to use the Q&A tool for that. You might want to open it now just to make sure that you have it all set and ready to go. So let's talk about what's new this fall. Uh, we have some, some changes in our scanning and some uh, new products that we want to make sure that you're aware of. First, uh, you might have noticed when you placed your order this fall that we now offer you the opportunity to purchase an annual subscription for scanning uh, that is a change from our former practice of seasonal scanning app orders. So with your new annual subscription for scanning, that includes unlimited leads. We know that that's going to be easier and probably more affordable for your office. We did a really careful cost analysis to make sure that it would actually be flat or a little bit lower than what you've paid in the past. Uh, and so we, we, we do believe it'll be more affordable to you. And uh, we also want to let you know that one day use is still available. I know that a lot of uh, admissions offices send an, an admissions rep out for just one day or one fair. So if you just need uh, just a one day access, you can still certainly get a one day subscription. And also want to mention that address verification service is also still available. Uh, because we know that a lot of you take advantage of that. So that's a new change for the app code workflow, which is what we call uh, using an app code and via a subscription as a way to get into the app and start scanning students. You'll also notice there are an expanded list of fair organizers who are including scanning with the college registration for their fair. So that feature is expanded in the app. Today, we're actually going to focus on this feature during the demo. But first, we want to talk to you about college matchmaking. Uh, college matchmaking was launched, uh, I believe, at the end, uh, might have been in the spring of 21. And uh, you will find, if you've used that, that matchmaking makes a huge difference uh, in the number of leads that you get back from a college fair. So because of the fact that on average, that service was producing about 10 times more leads at college fairs, uh, we did productize that that service. So now you can order college matchmaking as an annual subscription. Again, that includes unlimited leads. And the uniqueness about college matchmaking is it's really a student-driven matching process. I'm going to talk to you about the, the college experience, the student experience in just a moment. But the bottom line is, unlike name buys, these are really matched students who are highly qualified for your unique institution. So the matchmaking process is customized to your institution. And that, as a result, re re really produces highly qualified student leads. Uh, and you can see I've said twice there on the slide, this is very much unlike name buy. So in some respects, you want to think about it like a name buy because of the way that you'll pay for it and the way that it'll come to you. But it's a uh, 
wholly unlike a name by in the fact that it's a student driven process versus a name by that you would just make a demographic guess as to who might be attending your school. Uh, and uh, these are students who are literally in the search right now because we are marketing to them when they register for a college fair. So highly, highly qualified leads. And I'll talk to you about that in just a moment. Um, I just put into the chat if you wanna grab it, a link to more information about college matchmaking. You might want to grab that now. If you think you're going to want to investigate it, I'll leave it in the chat. But it's something that you and your admissions office decision makers should huddle on and really decide on together. It's very affordable. Let me go through a little bit more about the different experiences from both sides of the table. So on the college side, uh, you just fill out a very simple form, five questions. Uh, you can see on the screen, geographic region, campus setting, campus size, institution type, and areas of study. So when you give us those responses, obviously the students answer the same questions. What kind of a campus experience am I interested in? Where would I like to go? Geographic region. And they can choose from multiple. So certainly uh, if you're in any of their geographic region selections, you'll be matched. Campus setting, uh, suburban, rural, uh, urban, couldn't think of the third one, uh, campus size, small, medium, large, institution type, uh, that would be two-year, four-year, public, private, Hispanic serving, uh, you can even choose online, it's multi-pick from there, so you can actually, we know that a lot of institutions qualify under several institution types, you can pick them all, and then areas of study would be, you know, engineering, uh, health sciences, etc. The student answers the same questions, and when the match is made, we send them an email. That's the email, the actual email on the screen that you see right now. So uh, what you'll see is that we also provide the students with a qualification of the match. So we and we and we define what match is. So this is a good time for me to define that for you as well. It says here are your matches. Best match equals five out of five attributes match your selection. Closed match is four out of five attributes match your selections, and we don't match below four. So again, I want to reiterate to you as an admissions office, purchasing this service as an annual subscription, these are highly, highly qualified leads. Uh, kids in the search process, four out of five is the minimum match. So it's going to be a really beneficial process for your office for uh, applications, enrollment, and even fit and retention, because as you may notice, these questions that we're asking do align with the fit and retention questions that we know keep a student out of school. So uh, I'll put the URL that I have here um, in the chat uh, if you can't take a picture of the screen. But if you can take a picture of the screen, what we'd love for you to do is to take a moment, answer the questions on the page. So this is a really, really quick form for you to fill out and drop into the chat, the number of matches, this is the in interactive version uh, moment of our webinar. So uh, answer the questions on the page that this QR code leads you to. I also put the URL in the chat and drop into the chat the number of matches your institution has right now in our database. Keep in mind, your first lead set will be larger than the rest as we catch you up on the students already in our database who are not a, who are a match with with your school, but you'll continue to get matches all year it's an annual subscription. So each Monday we call that matchmaking Monday we think that's very cute matchmaking Mondays you will continue to get matches as students flow into our database there are over 50,000 students just from this fall already in our database so. Really, really great idea for you to go and get your leads from that database. If you uh, can get it sooner than later, then you're going to be communicating with those students in advance of maybe seeing them at a college fair or having them visit your campus. You can reach out to them early in the process because they now know and you now know that they are a match. So this is different from matchmaking at college fairs, and I'd like to explain to you how. And I saw somebody's hand go up. If you do have a question, please put it in the Q&A box. I, I'd love to be able to answer your question, but we are in webinar mode. So I won't be able to do that unless you put your question in the Q&A box for me. Uh, so the difference between college matchmaking in the annual subscription, and I'm doing this by the way, while you fill out your questions. So I'd love to see you post your numbers in the chat you should be able to chat with us. And, and it's just a fun thing for us to all see how many matches each of you have. Um, the average is three to 5,000 on that first lead set. So 
Um, we'll see how many come in at that average, any who come in above. Wow. That's a huge number that Peter just posted. That's great. Good for you, Peter. Um, so yeah. So, um, Michelle, you might just want to navigate to the URL that I put into the chat. Sorry, you're not able to get there by the QR code. So uh, what I want you to know is the difference between college matchmaking at college fairs and college matchmaking on the annual subscription is this. If you sign up for matchmaking or if your uh, college fair organizer provides matchmaking uh, as a part of the college fair experience, that is really excellent. And we love that. And college organizers who include that are very smart to do that because that means that you're going to be matched with and get leads from students, whether they get to your table or not, especially useful at big college fairs like NACAC, where thousands of kids are coming through the door and you just know you're not going to be able to see everybody who's a potential match for you. But the annual subscription for matchmaking is a little bit different. It allows you to cast a wider net. So these students who are in our database don't necessarily have to see you at a college fair. This is not matched by the restriction of both of you attending that college fair. This is a match straight up whether you're just a match or not. So uh, this is a, just a wider net that you can cast. And in, in most cases, it's going to give you an opportunity to reach students who you actually are not seeing at college fairs. So the way that we um, promote this and market this is uh, for we, we send it to students where they haven't been matched at a fair. So if, if fair organizers uh, have college matchmaking in place, great. Uh, we are not really marketing to those students, hey, who, let's find out who your matches are. But in any fair, and we, we host thousands of fairs on our platform. So for any fair where that's not included, which is the majority of fairs, we're marketing to them and saying, hey, do you want to see matches um, available maybe at this fair and beyond. And again, we have over 50,000 students in the database already from this fall. So students are eager to be matched with you. Thanks for putting your number in there, Lillian. Uh, students are eager to be matched with you. And we just really want to encourage you to come get those leads that you really will be able to follow up on. Uh, okay, so you just don't want to miss out on this opportunity. It's very affordable and it can significantly impact your applications and enrollment for the upcoming class and beyond. So how affordable you say? Let's talk about the price. Uh, the annual subscription for college matchmaking is $1,800 a year. That's again, flat. That includes unlimited leads. So as many students as sign up for our service who are also a match with you, you get those leads. We have no cap. Uh, so that's another way it's unlike a name by. But for example, oh, you guys are getting really big numbers. Thanks for putting your number in there, Karen. Uh, so for example, if the average is three to 5,000, although I feel like the average is going up because it, just you guys are making the average go up. Let's call the average 4,000 on the first the first match, which is just catching you up with what's already in the, the database, uh, 1800 divided by 4,000 is 45 cents a lead. So for those of you who are familiar with name buys and how much those cost, this is so much more affordable. And then those of you who are getting higher numbers, obviously that uh, cost per name is just going down. It's really plummeting. I, I don't even know how to do the math for Peter. He got a huge number. So did, I mean, you all got really huge numbers. Uh, and so the cost per name is really, really low. And remember that cost per name is only going to go down because you're going to continue to get leads every matchmaking Monday. So it's really affordable. Um, you can see on the screen here, that because you attended this webinar, you can also use the promo code to get a $100 discount. So these high quality leads are even more affordable for your school. So you might wanna grab that webinar code so that you pay $1,700 instead of $1,800. My next slide will be moving into the scanning app. So if you wanna QR code that, go to the website, um, you can also navigate to go to collegefairs.com and there's just uh, follow the college matchmaking navigation. So you should be all set. And uh, certainly if you have any other questions about college matchmaking, let me put our email oops, in the chat. If you have any other questions about college matchmaking, please, please, please feel free to reach out. And you can certainly ask those questions in the Q&A box, upvote the matchmaking questions if you'd like to hear uh, us address those questions at the end. I will watch for them. Go ahead and upvote them. I see a few of them coming in. 
uh, but we'll wait to, to the end to answer all questions. Okay, we're gonna switch gears into the scanning app. And just a quick overview. Uh, there are some really new, great features. Uh, you are gonna find that in the new app, you have in-app support. So uh, Greg will show you that in the demo in just a moment, just uh, so you know that wherever you are, whenever you are, you can get access to support right from inside the app. Uh, which makes it easy for you because the truth of the matter is if you're at a college fair and you need support, you need it to be fast and easy, and now it is. Uh, we want to make sure that, again, you understand the scanning is included workflow, which you can see at the bottom, like in the mi bottom middle of that, that screen, uh, screenshot on your screen right now on the slide. We're going to be going through that workflow in just a moment. Uh, there's also an opportunity for you to get uh, your access code if you forgot it. So Greg can show that briefly if he'd like. Um, we, do, we do believe it's gonna be a better scan experience. It's a lot faster because of some uh, tweaks we made in the way that the app operates. And uh, one of our favorite features is uh, your ability to view leads that you scanned and make notes on them later. So we're gonna show you all of that. That was just a quick introduction. Let's move over to the demo, Greg. All right, Holly, thank you very much. Uh, sharing my screen now. Can you see it okay? Yep, you're good. Okay, great. Well, thanks, Holly, uh, for the introduction, and thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Really excited to have you here and excited to show you the new features of the GTCF mobile scan app. Uh, before we get started, I just want everyone to um, be aware that in order to take advantage of these features, you want to be on the latest version of the app. Um, we're making uh, uh, updates to it um, all the time. Um, we've had uh, four or five uh, small releases in just the last month alone, um, making tweaks and updates and enhancements. So um, always be looking for the latest version. Uh, to figure out what version you do have, you can look in the bottom left-hand corner of the home screen of the app, and that will tell you uh, which version that you're that you're on. Uh, you want to be on 3.13 or higher. So um, I will put this slide up again at the end of the uh, uh, demo of the app, but you'll wanna go ahead and scan that. Uh, it's a good idea to do it while we're on the call. You can scan it. If you don't have the latest version, go ahead and install the latest version. Uh, you can scan the QR code to see if you do. Uh, basic requirements, uh, you need iOS 13 or above or Android 8.0 or above. So with that, I'm going to get into the, uh, the demo. And again, we'll come back to the slide at the end so that people can scan and make sure that they are on the current version of the app. Okay, so let's talk about the home screen. The home screen is new. And as Holly mentioned earlier, we have in-app support. So on the home screen of the app, uh, in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see that there's a blue uh, chat button. And when you click on that, uh, tap on that, you will see that you have, um, access to our bot Yoda, uh, where you can ask questions. Uh, you can also um, chat live one on one. So if I just put in something as simple as the word leads, um, doesn't like leads, need some more information. So we can um, enter the information here and get ourselves into a chat with one of our support representatives. That is uh, the in-app support with uh, Yoda. Our bot is 24 seven, of course, and you can get live one-on-one -on -one chat Monday through Friday, nine to five Eastern time. Okay, so back to the app. Okay, so on the home screen, we have a couple of uh, workflows, as Holly mentioned, under college fairs. So we're gonna focus on college fairs. The app does have some other features, but college fairs is what we're talking about here today. So in the college fair workflow, um, there are two ways to get into the app, and I'm gonna go ahead and select college fairs. And when I do that, you'll see that we have two ways to access the app, one via an access code, which is a subscription, uh, either a one day or annual, as Holly mentioned, that you can purchase directly from our website. And you can do that um, by, uh, if you don't have an access code already, you can do that by tapping on need an access code. And that will take you directly to our website to be able to order. That's at the bottom of this screen. Also, if you have an access code and you've forgotten it, uh, you can tap on forgotten access code and that will take you to a widget that allows you to enter your email address and then 
uh, go ahead and it will send you uh, any open subscription app codes that you currently have. Uh, so the difference between app code scanning and scanning is included at the fair is simply this. Some, as Holly mentioned, several fair organizers have opted to include scanning in the uh, with your booth or table so that you don't have to buy a separate access code to, to scan. Uh, that's not only um, more economical for you, but it's also uh, more convenient because you don't need an app code. You simply will go into the fair and select your school, which we'll show you here. So for this workflow, we're gonna go ahead and uh, view the scanning is included in this, in this fair. So I will go ahead and tap on that. And when you get there, you'll see a list of fair organizer who have included scanning for this season. So if you are a NACAC user, um, you can either select from the list or um, just tap on their logo and any fairs for, um, that are available today will show up. I'm gonna go back and select a demo fair for our purposes. So um, again, if, the, uh, if you don't see your fair organizer, so you're not sure if scanning is included, you can uh, tap on scanning is included. If you don't see your fair organizer, it's uh, highly likely that scanning is not included at the fair. And if it's not included at the fair, you can simply go back enter in via your access code and your access code will show you a list of all fares where scanning is not included, but scanning is available. So I will go back out to that and back into scanning is included. So I'm going to select the fair organizer, go to college fairs for today's demo. And you'll see a list of um, events that are available. Uh, don't worry if you don't see your event, your event is going to appear um, uh, depending on where you are in the country, right around 12 a.m. Uh, the day of the fair. So don't be alarmed if you don't see your fair under a fair organizer. Uh, the fairs appear on a daily basis that are available to scan. So I'm going to go ahead and select this event, the webinar demo event. And you'll see the next thing that I see is a list of colleges and universities who are registered. So how do you get to be in this list? As I mentioned before, when scanning is included, the fair organizer, uh, you will register with them as you normally do. So whatever the process is whereby you register with the uh, fair organizer to participate in that event, that action will, um, they work with us and, and those registrations will automatically appear in our app. So uh, all you need to do is register with them. That's, that's all the lift is for you. And then when you get to the event on uh, fair day, you simply select the event and your institution will be listed there. So I'm gonna go ahead and select College B. Uh, and this is a demo event, by the way, that you can test the app with. Uh, we're gonna, at the end of the um, webinar, we will send a list of sample barcodes that you can use. So this is something that you'll be able to uh, test and uh, work, work with the app ahead of actually going to one of your fairs. So um, if you have not, after I've selected the fair, you can see that uh, on my next slide, it's saying to update the profile settings. And for me, it didn't do that. And the reason that it didn't do that for me is because I've already updated my profile. But if you are a first time user, oh, sorry about that. I seem to have lost connection, bear with me. Okay, moving back. Okay, sorry about that folks. Hopefully we're back there. Um, I will go back to uh, that scan screen. So if you're a first time user in the app, it will take you automatically to your profile. Uh, it will only do this the first time that you use the app because it requires a profile in order to scan. So this profile is used for a couple of things. One, it's our instant student connect feature. And if you're not familiar with that, instant student connect is a way for you to send a, a welcome email, which you can craft here below. We have a sample uh, and you will enter your profile information, your full name, email, and uh, are both required. Phone number is optional and you can update the email body at a profile pick and an institution logo. Here uh, with the Instant Student Connect feature, if you modify the uh, email body template, you will be able to, uh, our system will automatically send this email 
upon the scan being uploaded. So the scan will upload it, upload, and you'll instantly be able to send an email to the student thanking them and have any other information that you uh, have in there that you would like to add. Uh, you don't want to change any of the merge fields. So uh, where it says dear first name, dear last, and last name, those are clearly any of the at fields you can see are merge fields. So you don't want to change those. That's how the app knows who to address, the, um, who to send the email to. So you don't want to change any of those. Uh, if you do, no worries. I'm going to select everything. Say, oh, I made a terrible mistake here. Let me see if I can just remove everything. So if I've changed something that I don't want to change, and bear with me while I just remove everything because my select all is not cooperating. Uh, and I save. Uh, what will happen when I go back to profiles, it will put all the default information back in. So only if I remove everything will the default come back. So that's kind of a do over. Oops, I really messed up this email. I accidentally removed some merge fields. Just select everything, delete it, save, and you can come back and now edit it. Uh, if you edit the simple text, that will save. So that's not going to, it's not going to default back to the, um, the default messages unless you remove everything. So it's just a way for you to um, have an oops moment and, and be able to recover. Uh, the other thing about the, um, the Instant Student Connect feature is when you first uh, install the app, it will be defaulted to on. So uh, enabled, I should say, which is uh, something that you can turn off if you don't want to send Instant Student Connect emails uh, to people. So uh, the, the app will remember your uh, settings. So when you go to another fair, if you want it to be on, you'll have to go in and turn it on. Uh, okay, and then the last thing that it's used for is to identify the end user in the lead portal. So you may have multiple reps scanning at, uh, at an event. And if you do have multiple reps scanning in an event, those leads will be um, listed separately in the uh, lead portal under the end user uh, email that is listed here. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave Instant Student Connect off. And this will now take me to the scan screen. So lots going on on this scan screen, lots of new features, lots of exciting things. Uh, on one screen, you have a lot of information. So let me just go through it here quickly. You can see the fair organizer, the name of the event, the date of the event, the uh, college or university, and the profile. You also see the leads that you have, um, the leads that you have uploaded and the leads that are not uploaded. And we will uh, cover that in a moment. You also have something, uh, a checkbox here, which is scan and qualify. We're going to uh, talk about what that is in, in just a couple of moments. And uh, we have the uh, manual entry, which is here. And we'll go over that in just a few moments. The last lead scanned, which is here, view leads, uh, view your scan leads and view your uploads for all fair. So we're gonna cover all of those here. Uh, let's go ahead and, and move on, and we're going to go to scanning of students. Uh, for the purpose of this first scan, I'm going to disable the scan and qualify, and then I'll scan another and enable it. So scan and qualify, by the way, is uh, is defaulted to on. And again, whatever you save, it, the app will remember. And when you come back to another event, if you want to, if it's not as busy and you have time to qualify each student and make some uh, notes, on each student, you can turn that back on. If it's very busy, you're gonna to wanna to turn that off. So I'm gonna pretend that I'm in a busy fair and I'm gonna go ahead and touch the scan button. And you'll see that as soon as I scan that student, the barcode is automatically up, uploaded. And that's because we have internet access and I'll get into the scenarios with and without internet access. But you'll notice that when I scan that person, I see them last lead scan there at the bottom. And, uh, and there, I'm, I can, I'm ready to move on um, directly into that next lead. So I'm going to show you scan and qualify by enabling that and scanning the next person. And when I scan the next person, instead of coming back to that screen, it's going to take me to, it, it immediately uploads the barcode, but it's also going to take me to uh, a place where I can rank the lead and make some uh, notes. So contact right away. Okay, and I can save that. And that information will be in the leads portal for you as well in the notes section of the, uh, of the lead. So there's a column in there for notes. 
So those are the two different modes that you can have scan and qualify. And uh, and you re remove that, it's more of a rapid scan where you can just uh, quickly scan one person after another. So depending on the scenario that you're in, if you're in a very busy fair and you only have time to just scan and move on, uh, you can always come back later. We're going to cover that in just a moment. You can come back later and qualify that lead. But if you're in a hurry, you can um, you can just scan and, and move on. Again, if you have time, you can turn scan and qualify on. I'll turn it off for uh, the next portion of that. So I talked about internet access with and without. So you saw what happens when I do have internet access, and that's a good thing. Um, the leads are uploading in, in real time immediately as I scan. But as we all know, internet is spotty at best uh, in a lot of places. So I'm gonna go ahead and emulate bad internet by um, turning on airplane mode. And you can see that when I've done that, I, there was a flash that my connection is lost. And you can see that I'm showing offline here. I'm gonna go ahead and scan a barcode. And when I do, it lets you know that the scan is saved securely and the upload is pending. And you also notice that the lead here is red and I don't know who it is, it's just an ID number. Well, that's okay. Um, the app will eventually know who it is and your lead portal will certainly know who it is. But since we don't have internet access right now, we can't identify uh, who belongs to that, that barcode ID. So um, if you don't have internet access, um, the app will automatically know it, will let you know that you're offline, and it will continue to collect scans that can be uh, uploaded later. So I'm gonna go ahead and qualify this, even though I don't know this person's name. Just so that when we do have that information um, available to us, we're, uh, the qualification still uh, comes along with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn airplane mode back off. When I do, you can see that the connection is enabled. You can also see that the, um, that the uh, online or the offline uh, message has gone away. And as, a, as of this point, um, the, I, I still only see the ID number. Uh, and that's because that lead has not tried to uh, contact the server again yet. There's a couple of uh, things that will happen here. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and show you both of those. If I go in and I qualify that lead or save that lead again, it immediately now can contact the server and it knows who that person is. So uh, that would happen, and I'll get into this just a little bit later. Um, that would happen um, by an action that I would do, like saving a lead or scanning another lead. But it would also happen when I when internet access was available again to me. It would happen within a five minute period. So the app runs with a five minute background clock that will automatically upload um, and collect any information on on scans that you have. So internet in and out at an event, no problem. Um, the, that is something that um, uh, the app is built to, to handle. So the other option here is manual entry. And that's very simple as uh, you know that sometimes the student barcode may not be scannable for some reason, that's okay. Uh, we give you the ability to enter the barcode number which we print under every single uh, uh, confirmation that we send. And um, you can just enter the barcode number there and you'll have that person's information. So that's the manual entry, pretty straightforward. Let's talk about last lead scanned. So the last lead scanned, as I mentioned, uh, you can qualify leads by turning on scan and qualify. But if you don't um, want to do that right away, you wanna just scan the person, talk to them for a few minutes and then say, hey, and I look down at my phone because I already for, have forgotten who I'm talking to. I look down at my phone and say, hey, Legra, uh, let me ask you a question. And now I can tap on their name right down at the bottom where it says last lead scan. I can tap on their, their name and I can qualify that lead. So I can do that uh, by turning scan and qualify on, but I can also do that by just tapping the last person that I scanned. We also think it's pretty convenient to be able to see the last person that you scanned. So you know their name. If you're talking to somebody for a few minutes, uh, you, you may have forgotten already as they introduce themselves, but it's a nice way to be able to look down and, and see some information. If there is the high school that they've gone to or the grad year, that will also display there. So if you wanna work that into your conversation, uh, you're able to do that. For this test barcode that I scanned, there was no, um, no high school and no grad year, but those are required fields and you should see those for uh, any student that you would scan. 
Okay, so view and qualify lead. So this is really the next piece. Um, you can see that I'm on the scan at the bottom. Uh, I'm on the scan and at the bottom there is a view leads button. When I tap that view leads button, that's gonna show me everyone that I've scanned for this event, uh, including the date and time that I scanned them. So if I wanna go back and qualify someone and say, you know, I was speaking to someone, I don't, ex I don't know who they are for sure, but I remember their first name was Hendrick and there was something I wanted to remember and add, I can tap on any of those and then um, uh, scan and, or, or qualify and re-rank that lead. So I can add new notes and everything that you do will just automatically update and resave that contact and update it on our server. Again, assuming there's internet access, and if not, it will do it as soon as it can get internet access. So that's a way for you to easily go back and look at everyone that you've scanned. Uh, you can see your count, they're here, and then you can uh, go back and qualify and edit those. Okay, so we talked about scans, um, the upload process, and the scans uploading immediately when internet access is available. So as I mentioned, when it's not available, um, the remaining leads will automatically upload within five minutes um, of establishing an internet connection again. There's a couple of ways to get the leads to upload um, once if you have, uh, if you haven't had internet access and now you do and you've scanned a bunch of people. One, you can just open the app and wait up to five minutes and they will automatically upload. But if you don't wanna wait, you can go to the manual upload. And this manual upload is going to show you and that's this button right down here. This manual uh, button will show you all of the fares in which you've captured leads for. And you can upload the remaining scans for any fare. I don't have any here, but if I did, I would simply tap on the uh, event and be able to click on the button that says upload remaining scans and any scans that weren't uploaded will upload. So it's just a way to do it without waiting for the app, but otherwise the app will automatically do it when it has internet access. The nice thing about this feature is uh, where you're, when you're on the scan screen, you only see scans for the event that you're on and uploads for the event that you're on. Uh, same with view leads, and that makes sense because we're in a particular event here. But when I go to uploads, this is now showing me everything. So I can look back at past events, how many people did I scan, make sure everybody is uploaded, et cetera. Okay, so um, this is a, a feature that we've added that is um, that I, I think you'll find uh, very useful. Uh, it's good if you have multi sessions and you close the app. So you have a morning session and afternoon session. It's also good if you just uh, made a mistake and accidentally closed the app. Oops, I closed the app. When I open the app back up, it will automatically take me to where I was. So whatever screen I was on, whatever event I was on, it will take me right back to where I was. If the event is over, it's, if it's expired, the app will, uh, will not take you into the event, but rather it will take you back to the login page. So if you close the app in the middle of an event, uh, don't worry, just open it up and you'll be right back where you were. If you close the app at the end of the event and you open it up for a new event, you'll end up right back on this screen uh, so that you can start again. So that concludes the demonstration of the app. I will leave it on this screen and uh, so that you guys can scan that barcode again and make sure that you have the absolute latest version. Uh, 3.13 is the current version in both Google Play and App Store. So make sure that you scan that and, uh, and you wanna be on that version. And we can open it up to any questions, Holly. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna leave your screen up for just a moment um, and uh, just remind people to just check in your app store if it lists that you need an update, that's fine, take the update. Um, but I am gonna go ahead and toggle back to my screen, Greg, uh, because I want to remind people uh, how to do their upvoting and then show a few other ways that folks can get um, sorry, I'm looking in the chat. There's a few questions that are showing up in chat. Guys, I, I really wanna make sure that you uh, remember that you wanna use the Q&A box. We are no longer checking chat. In fact, I'm closing it on my webinar window. So please put your uh, questions in the Q&A box. And that also gives people 
uh, an opportunity to upvote your question because uh, they may have the same question in their mind and they would not be checking chat for your question. So while you're collating and putting your questions into the Q&A box, and we are gonna answer those questions in just a moment, I'm gonna give you a couple other ways that you can get help from us if we're not sitting right in front of you during a webinar. The first is via chat. As Greg just showed you, you can get to us uh, through the app and initiate a chat with us that way, or you can get to us on our website, initiate a chat with us that way. You also can access the Help Center, which is also on our website, by clicking Help Center. That's gonna take you over to this screen, uh, which is our Help Center. And you can either uh, search your question uh, or uh, scan the cards that you see below uh, for the topic or the overarching theme of whatever your question might entail. The other thing that you can do from the help center is add a ticket for our uh, help desk. So if you are having a problem that you can't see any reason that you should be having it uh, after you've read a few articles and you just need a little bit more help than the articles are giving, you can certainly add a ticket. This is also a nice option if you don't have anybody live to chat with. Remember, our chat is available nine to five uh, Eastern on weekdays. So if you need help, uh, and you have a very specific question or problem, you can certainly add a ticket from our help center. And finally, uh, we wanna let you know that you can join our community. We love to hear, you can see discussion boards and people who ask questions in the community. Uh, we post updates in the community, things that are coming up, releases that are gonna be coming out, uh, roadmap items, things that we're planning on doing that'll be a few months out just to keep yourself abreast on all the things that we're doing here at Go to College Fairs and giving us some feedback on what you'd love to see us do, uh, what we're doing well and what you think we could do better. We love to hear about that. Honestly, both sides of that equation, we love to hear about it. So please join our community uh, and you will be able to do that uh, in the Help Center. And then when you are a member of the community, then you can also add a topic where my arrow is pointing now. Okay, so again, Let's work on the questions. I only see two questions in the Q&A box, so I'll answer those. And I also uh, want to let you know that uh, you can um, jump off if you got all the information that you need. This was recorded and uh, we will send the recording out, but I will answer the questions. So uh, Lillian uh, is asking a question. Um, she asked this question, Greg, in two different ways. And thanks for switching back over because you knew that I would need you to show her. Uh, I, I suspect that she went in through the wrong workflow. So if you would show that workflow again, I think that would be helpful to Lillian. Uh, yeah, you are so the first thing that I would say, Lillian, is uh, to make sure that you've got the latest version. So uh, the very first thing that you'll see when you open the app is this screen. So if you don't see this screen when you first open the app, you don't have the latest version of the app. If you do see this screen, then you do have the latest version. And when you tap on college fairs, you will either get to the access code entry or the scanning is included in this fair. But again, um, when you first open up the app, if this is not the screen that you see and you don't have version 3.1.3, .3, uh, you're likely on one of our older versions so the workflows will not be the same. The included scanning functionality is new this season for most of the fair organizers. So uh, if you continue to have any issues there, please don't hesitate um, to send an email to info at gotocollegefairs.com and one of our support people will uh, get back to you immediately and, and walk you through that. Thanks, Greg. Mm -hmm. And Nina is asking, how do I add multiple reps to one account? We often have various reps attending events who are not the account holders. So Nina, there's a couple of options for you. What we're focusing on today is when scanning is included at a college fair. When scanning is included by the college fair organizer, you can send anyone uh, it doesn't have to be the person who signed up for the fair. So in the scanning is included workflow, you can have unlimited reps at your desk, booth, or table, and you can have uh, any reps that you want to send. So there's really nothing tying, um, tying you to an order at scanning is included. Uh, but if you do have uh, 
if you are attending fairs where you're using an access code, uh, you want to make sure that all your reps have yeah, an access code. So you can either get them an annual subscription, or as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, you can also get them a one day use, which is really affordable. It's $25. And that's for the entire day, not per fair. So $25 for a day, if you have a rep that's just going out for one day, covering somebody else or whatever, uh, they might even go to more than one fair, it's $25 for the whole day. So you want to make sure that they have an access code if scanning is not included at the fair that they are attending. But if scanning is included, you uh, have no worries, they will be able to get into the app with the screen that Greg's showing you right now. Any other input on that one, Greg? No, just that um, it would be great um, to, you know, if you do have an included scanning, um, it, that, it, as Holly mentioned, any number of the reps can just select the university or the college, and it's their profile email that will distinguish the, the, the scans in the lead portal. So uh, if it's included scanning, no worries, you'll all select the exact same college and university uh, for everyone in your group. Okay. Um, and then I'm just going to answer Nina's follow-up question quickly. Uh, she's asking, would an annual subscription allow me unlimited reps? I think you're talking about an annual subscription for scanning. So I'm going to answer that question. If that's not the question you're asking, please post it again, uh, worded differently. Oh, thanks, Nina. Um, so um, the, unlim the annual subscription is unlimited leads for one user. So it's one user, unlimited fares, unlimited leads for an entire year. It is not an annual, it's a, it's a per user subscription. It's actually a per device subscription. So you can't use it on your iPad and your phone, you'd have to pick one. So uh, that annual subscription for scanning is unlimited fares, unlimited leads, but it is uh, tied to one rep. Hopefully that answers your question. Okay, I'm gonna go to Karen's question. And I'm looking actually, um, I think you make a really good point. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't um, say it. Uh, her question is, as an aeronautical university, it would be great to see the option of aviation slash flight in your, your college matchmaking selection. Is that something you could incorporate? So uh, just so you know, Karen, where we got the list is from um, uh, Big Future, um, the College Board Big Future website. And we took the top most uh, list of categories. We didn't want to be on the hook for exactly what you're explaining here, which is what, why did we choose what we choose? So we just took somebody else's list. Uh, but I can see that that's a whole. And if you uh, send in a, a ticket to uh, info at go to collegefairs.com, we'll give that some consideration um, after I have a, an opportunity to look a little bit harder to make sure that none of the other categories encompass um, aviation of flight. So thanks for raising that. Are there any other questions? Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your attention so far. We are coming up on uh, 47 minutes in. So I'd like to um, give you a chance to ask the rest of your questions. Um, okay. Um, Looks like no questions. Um, okay, so it looks like we just answered all your questions, which we love to do. And um, we will stay on for just another few moments, but I will uh, send you adieu if you've heard everything you need and you don't have any additional questions. We'll just thank you again for coming to uh, the webinar today and for participating, for asking great questions. Um, if you do want to try it out, I'm going to go ahead and put this in the chat uh, before you go. And uh, again, what you want to do is use the scanning is included workflow. Uh, Greg, you might want to just show it um, if they want to try it out. And I've posted the sample barcodes in the chat, Greg. Okay. So uh, what, what would you like me to show, Holly? I want you to just show the scanning is included workflow and the go to college fairs uh, fair organizer from the list and the webinar test event. I know that's what you used uh, while you were doing your demo, but now that I'm giving people the opportunity to try it on their own, I wanna uh, just show them one more time. So you'll go to college fairs 
and then scanning is included, which is on the bottom third of the screen, and then choose go to college fairs as the fair. So that's about halfway down the list. And the webinar demo event that's set up just for you. That'll be up until midnight today, right, Greg? Uh, yes. Midnight, midnight, midnight Eastern time. And then so you can choose any of those college, A, B, C, D, or E, doesn't really matter. You can choose any of them. This is just for you to get comfortable with the scanning functions and features and uh, make sure that you're all set by the time you get to your fair. Okay. And I think that's it. Oh, there's one more question in the Q&A box. Let me get to that. So Michelle's asking, is each student assigned a barcode? Yes, so when students register, they fill out a um, pretty fast registration form. It's pretty quick. So it's a, you know, name, address, phone number, self-reported GPA, academic interest, intended majors. Um, they will fill out the matchmaking questions and then they uh, are registered for the fair. And upon completion of their registration, they can either print out or screenshot a barcode. It can also be texted to them. So they do get a unique barcode. Every student has a unique barcode that they should be able to bring with them to the college fair. Good question, Michelle. Okay, uh, wrapping it up then, no further questions. We'll give it another moment. If you wanna ask another uh, question or two, we will stay on and answer those via uh, text on the screen. But for now, I will go back on mute. Thank everybody for being here and uh, we'll see you at the next webinar. Have a great day. Thanks everyone. Okie doke, seeing no questions, I'm gonna end the webinar. Thanks again for being here, have a great day.